Tonight, the city of San Antonio working to address housing insecurity in our area. A gun found on the campus of a local high school today. And there's a cool and damp day in the forecast. Meteorologist Katie Blake will be here with a look in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight. Streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom, I'm Myra Arthur. As the end of the year approaches, the city of San Antonio is hoping to collect as much information as possible to understand what's causing displacement, people being forced out of their homes and housing instability in our community. Tiffany Muerta spoke to a woman who experienced homelessness and how a city program helped her find a home. I've been homeless twice so far here in San Antonio, and so I probably wouldn't be homeless again or living at a hotel or in town suite or something. It hasn't been an easy journey for Nikki Johnson. My company was laid off back in March at the beginning of the year, and it was a struggle trying to figure out how to pay the rent right after I received a rent increase. She says the city helped her, and it changed her life. They assisted me with several months worth of rent as well as utility assistance. They also gave me some other resources. Nikki received assistance through the Risk Mitigation Fund. The Risk Mitigation is a fund that was created in the FY19 budget that started with a million dollars. And the whole purpose of that Risk Mitigation Fund was to help families that were experiencing displacement. City officials say the money from the Risk Mitigation Fund can be used to provide housing counseling, mortgage assistance, utility connection, or disconnection fees. People displaced for code violations can also receive assistance for a temporary hotel stay, moving truck, movers, storage, rental deposits, and first month's rent. Our commitment in last year's fiscal budget was that we would go back and evaluate the policy uh, of how we were utilizing the money, if the categories of assistance still made sense, and to um, evaluate, essentially survey, the people who had received assistance. Nikki shared her story with San Antonio residents during an event at the Central Library hosted by the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department. We're just asking questions, just trying to get a pulse on what's going on with the people of San Antonio. The city is collecting data from these meetings to use as part of their year performance report for the risk mitigation policy. Soto says this information will help update the policy and the approach on how they help people. She says the community has shared personal experiences that will help them determine what to do moving forward. They're telling us what kind of pressures they're having, that the rent is going up, that they have to uh, sell because they can't afford to stay in their property if the property taxes are rising. So they're telling us what neighborhoods are starting to feel the impact with the rents going up. Nikki believes learning more about the program can help someone like it helped her. These programs are very, very important to keep families off the street and to keep roofs over people's heads, as well as provide other resources. Since the program started, more than 300 people have been helped. The information collected from the meetings will be presented to two housing boards next year. Now, if you'd like to share feedback to the city or need assistance, we will have a link on our website, ksat.com slash news at nine. Myra. Thank you, Tiffany. An update tonight on a story about a veteran Bear County deputy accused of performing unlawful strip searches on women during traffic stops. The case at 12 defenders have learned that the sheriff's office kept Deputy Floyd Berry on the job despite a similar incident that occurred at the jail. Records show that Berry was suspended 10 days in 2010 after he ordered a female jailer to record a strip search of a male inmate. Barry was arrested December 7th after several women came forward and said he pulled them over and conducted illegal strip searches on them. Investigators believe there could be more victims out there. Barry is currently free on bond and on administrative leave pending a proposed termination. A mother desperate to solve her daughter's murder decides that she will try to do that herself. The search is still on tonight for the shooters who injured four people at South Park Mall last night and support growing for a way to honor African-American Civil War troops. Here's tonight's 9 at 9, an abrupt end to a local aggravated sexual assault trial. Alan Arredondo Bratton was found guilty yesterday as the punishment phase was beginning today. Bratton's attorney announced that there was a plea agreement. I assess your punishment at 35 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. There's a $1,500 fine 
I'm going to make an affirmative finding that there is a deadly weapon used in the commission of the offense. Before prosecutors accepted that plea deal, they discussed it with the victim. She agreed and they went forward. More than three years after a Louisiana woman's daughter was shot and killed, she's still waiting for the case to be solved. Now she's taking matters into her own hands. What keeps me going is my kids and my family and the memory of my daughter, because I know my daughter left a legacy behind and I have to fulfill it. Teresa Tilbin just graduated with honors with an associate's degree in criminal justice. She eventually wants to work in law enforcement to solve her daughter's case. A Florida judge has pushed back the start of the trial for Nicholas Cruz to next summer. Cruz is accused of killing 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, back in February of 2018. The San Antonio police searching for the suspects responsible for a shooting at South Park Mall last night. It left four people in the hospital. Investigators say this was no random shooting. The victims were the targets. The victims, three men and one woman, ranging in ages between 17 and 41, are still recovering. Police say the four were leaving the mall around 9 last night. As they were leaving, witnesses told police they saw at least two people fire shots at the victims and then jump into a black Dodge Charger. Protests continued in 15 cities across India today in response to the controversial Citizenship Amendment Act. The public anger over that bill is due to the law's promise to fast track Indian citizenship for religious minorities from three neighboring countries, but not if they are Muslim. Critics of the law say it's unconstitutional and would further marginalize India's 200 million strong Muslim community. In Australia, fires continue to burn. Smoke from those fires covering the city of Sydney. And the country suffered its hottest day on record this week at 107.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Citizens protesting that the government has not done enough to tackle climate change and that these fires are a symptom. The reality of climate change is upon us. Droughts are getting longer and more severe. Heat waves are becoming longer and more severe. A fire breaks out at Northwest Side San Antonio School this morning. Firefighters got the call for a fire at the Idea Ingram Hill campus around 11 o'clock. I really started panicking when I saw the smoke coming down the 410 bridge. But thankfully, all the firefighters and everybody, they helped. I'm just, I'm glad to see the kids are okay. No injuries were reported. Caught on camera, a mosh pit at a California Denny's. The restaurant was rented for a birthday party headlined by a punk band. The show ended up turning into this. Some furniture was broken. The band launched a GoFundMe account to try to pay for the damages. No one was arrested. Growing support in Virginia to build a monument honoring 14 African-American Civil War heroes. Organizers want a statue to honor one of the first attacks of the Civil War, exclusively led by African-American commanders. These guys got medals of honor in 1865. Right away, it was such an important battle. Fundraising has started for this project. It will be paid for entirely with private donations. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. A San Antonio entrepreneur is hoping to open up opportunities for other small business owners and artists and at the same time create a new hangout spot just north of downtown. Ricardo Ortiz is gearing up to open 88 social food truck park and bar along Avenue B and 10th Street about a block off Broadway. Ortiz says this is a business dream that he and his brother have been planning nearly their entire lives. The park can accommodate five food trucks and two modular storage containers that will be turned into space for a bar, restrooms and storage. It will be right along the museum reach of the San Antonio River, where retail offices, condos and apartments are currently being built. It's on the river walk. You're already in an area where that has high tourism. So I think it's a it's a good fit, you know, just for the neighborhood, just to be able to, you know, um, to have some space for the arts and also you know, kind of make it a destination for people to stop by and see how creative San Antonio can be. Ortiz's brother Armando Ortiz was a big inspiration in planning this business endeavor. He was killed by a wrong way driver nearly three years ago. The name of the business pays homage to his memory. Ortiz hopes to have this park open by next spring. Katie Blake is with us tonight to talk about these temperatures, 
some people hoping for a little warm up, but also some rain. Yeah, we do need a good soaking rain. And while we've got rain chances in the forecast for Friday, it's not going to be all the rain that we need. And it's going to be a little bit deceiving because you'll look at maybe the weather app tomorrow or online and see cloudy rain through a good portion of the day, but it's going to be so light. It's not going to be the heavy soaking rain that we need, but at least it's something. Yeah, it's something. Right, <laughs> there you go. Did you notice an increase in clouds today? It was those high, thin clouds in the sky, cirrus clouds that were pouring in from the west during the day today. I uh, love these clouds. They are the highest up in the atmosphere, so they're the thinnest because they're made completely of ice crystals because it is so cold up there in the sky. We started off cold this morning, 27, our morning low temperature. That's the coldest we've been in 20. 19 so a frigid start to the day, but we made it all the way up to 60 degrees this afternoon. That's pretty close to average for this time of year. Bernie stage, you're already falling back into the 30s. You're at 36 and a pretty big spread even between Bernie stage and the airport in San Antonio. We're still in the low 50s here and as we head into the overnight hours through tomorrow morning, it's just not going to be quite as cold because we've seen that increase in cloud cover. Those clouds kind of act as a little bit of a blanket and help the air to be able to keep the air from being able to cool down as quickly. And here's a look at satellite and radar right now. We've got a ton of this cloud cover that continues to pour in from the south and from the west. So I'm going to take you out to a wider view really quickly so you can kind of see the setup as we head into the next couple of days. We've got a lot of moisture moving in from the uh, Pacific from the southwest there, and that's what we started to see in the form of that high cloud cover today. Farther to the north, coming off of the Rockies, we've got our next upper level low pressure system. This is the lift that we need to see rain. We also need the moisture. So we've got these two things kind of coming together. The combination of these two things will give us uh, what's looking like a pretty damp and cool day on Friday. So skies will continue to fill in with clouds overnight tonight, such that by early tomorrow morning, skies are gray and we've got some rain starting to fill in. For the Friday morning commute, rush hour, 7 a.m., I'm thinking we're probably going to see more mist and drizzle than anything else, but showers will be moving in from the southwest, and that's the trend we'll see through the day on Friday. 1 p.m. after lunchtime, we've still got these light passing showers moving through, and that'll continue through the afternoon and evening hours. So there will be rain around through a big chunk of the day tomorrow, but a lot of this rain is just going to be really light, kind of nuisance rainfall. Think of the rain that you like don't know what setting to put your windshield wipers on because it's heavier and then it kind of stops and then it comes back. That's what we're looking at heading into the day on Friday with rain chances wrapping up by early Saturday. So for tomorrow with the clouds and the rain, we do not warm up. We're in the 40s in the morning, only up to the low 50s in the afternoon. You are going to want the jacket all day and also an umbrella or maybe make that a rain jacket because it's going to be staying cool with that light passing rain uh, hanging around through the day on Friday. So not the most beautiful day in the world tomorrow, Myra, <laughs> and not all the rain that we need. But if you're a fan of, you know, kind of Seattle-ish weather, you may like this tomorrow. That, that's a good way to spin it, Katie. We've got some better news <laughs> coming for the weekend, so I left that part and out. And that's we'll what really counts. We'll talk about that. Right, thanks. <laughs> uh -huh. You're watching K7 News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. Here at home, a social media tip leads to the discovery of a handgun in a car at John Jay High School. According to Northside ISD, shortly after the tip was reported to campus administrators, they were able to find the 17 year old student and his car. Along with the handgun, they also found a pill that hasn't been identified yet. 
No arrests were made today, but we're told that could change. The district says the teenager did not make any threats against anyone or the school. And turning now to some of tonight's top stories, the federal government is reporting a 2.7 percent increase in the nation's homeless population. That's based on a count taken that was in January. The Department of Housing and Urban Development says this is the third consecutive uptick in homelessness and that it was driven by a 16.4 percent increase that happened in California. While overall the homeless count increased, HUD found pockets of progress. The department noted declines in the number of homeless veterans and families on the streets. A Chinese national has been arrested for trespassing at President Trump's Mar-a-Lago Resort in South Florida. Palm Beach police say that 56-year-old Jing Lu was asked to leave the property on Wednesday, but authorities later found Lu was still on the property taking pictures of the resort. They also found her visa had expired. She's being held in jail for loitering and obstruction without violence. This is the second time this year a Chinese national has been arrested at that Mar-a-Lago property. Coca-Cola is facing criticism for trying to convince teenagers and moms that its sugary drinks are healthy. That's according to research by the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. The journal analyzed internal documents from two Coca-Cola ad campaigns. They found that Coke was mostly targeting the two groups to its products to shift their attitudes. A Coca-Cola spokesperson says the company is cutting sugar in products around the world and does not market to kids under 12. The University of the Incarnate Word celebrated its 150th anniversary this year. So tonight, we're taking a look back at its beginnings. RJ Marquez tells us the story that begins with a call for help and was answered by a group of nuns. It's tonight's Throwback Thursday. The foundation of the University of the Incarnate Word can be traced back to a single letter in 1869. That letter was sent from a bishop in San Antonio to the Catholic sisters in France. The letter asked for the sisters' help to care for victims of a cholera outbreak in the city. Without hesitation, three sisters made their way to San Antonio and established the city's first hospital, the Santa Rosa Clinic. They primarily cared for the poor and single mothers. While the women were in the hospital, the sisters took care of them. And in some instances, if the patient died, they kept on taking care of the kids and they started an orphanage. The sisters decided to teach the orphans subjects like writing and math. In 1881, they received a state charter to educate children. They opened a school at the George Brackenridge Estate, which became the college and the academy of the Incarnate Word. And that's the main administration building. It has grade school, high school, and, and college students. In 1913, a young woman from Durango, Mexico, named Antonia Mendoza, became Incarnate Word's first graduate. Since then, the university has awarded thousands of degrees in fields ranging from philosophy to business, always trying to keep the mission of service in mind. Today, um, all our students are required to perform service hours. Every year, the university honors its connections to the past with a celebration symbolizing the passing of the torch from one generation to the next. At Christmas time, we celebrate uh, you know, the nativity of the Lord. It's a, understandably a huge celebration here on campus that we call Light the Way. It all goes back to a plea for help, a trio of Catholic sisters willing to make a sacrifice to help the sick here in San Antonio. These three young women in the early 20s had to leave France and without knowing English and say, well, we'll learn it. Uh, without really knowing nursing, well, we'll learn it, we'll do it. Throwback Thursday, just one of the series that we feature here on KSAT News at 9. Here's a lineup of some of the others that we have. Tune in tomorrow night for a look back at the week's biggest stories in the week in 210. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank.
Hi, I'm Major Ashley Bauer, stationed in the Horn of Africa. I want to wish a Merry Christmas back home in San Antonio, Texas, to my husband Ken, my parents Steve and Gloria, and to all my friends and family and co-workers stationed there. Go Spurs, go! It's the last weekend before Christmas, so we're staying in the holiday spirit. I'm Alicia Barrera, and these are your weekend picks. One of San Antonio's favorite holiday tradition continues. It's the San Antonio Symphony Holiday Pops performance happening at the Tobin. There's three performances, including one on Saturday evening at 8 p.m. and Sunday afternoon at 2. And calling all witches, wizards, and muggles to take a break from holiday shopping. This weekend at the zoo, they're having the Harry Otter Day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's an event included with zoo admission and it's free for annual pass holders. No magic tricks here, come dressed as your favorite character. Now back to holiday shopping. You can head over to La Villita on Saturday from 5.30 to 7.30. It's gonna be holiday shopping by day and a free family-friendly movie screening of Santa Claus in Plaza Juarez by night. Cozy blankets and lawn chairs are welcome. For more on these events and everything happening around town, you can head over to ksat.com. For The Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Oh yeah, it's no secret which uh, Weekend Picks event we'll be featuring here. This is free content, people. Free download. Look at these guys. <laughs> there may not be that much water at the zoo for them uh, on Harry Otter Day on Saturday, but it's actually going to be really nice. So we spent the last part of the forecast talking about how cloudy and cool and rainy Friday is going to be, but things are going to clear up just in time for the weekend, and that does include for Harry Otter Day at the zoo on Saturday. Temperatures will be climbing into the 50s early Saturday afternoon with skies clearing out after a foggy and cloudy morning. So we have the rainy day tomorrow. The system that brings all that in will be moving out of Texas by early Saturday, taking the cloud cover and rain with it. But really early Saturday morning, we still could be left with some lingering cloud cover and also some fog. But as we get into Saturday afternoon, Afternoon. Skies will continue to clear out. We'll see a high temperature near 60 degrees. More morning fog possible on Sunday, then completely sunny with a high temperature near 64. So don't let tomorrow get you down because the weekend is looking pretty good. And this is an important weekend because that takes us into Christmas week next week, which also looks fairly nice. Temperatures climbing back into the low 70s as we approach Christmas Eve on Tuesday and then Christmas Day on Wednesday. Cloud cover will start to build back in by Christmas Monday. and we'll have mostly cloudy skies on Thursday. Let's go to KSAT.com now to find out what's trending tonight with Ferris Sabawi. Uh, Myra, it is almost Christmas time. You can feel it in the <laughs> I air. I know. It's been a little Christmassy around here today. I know. I know. It's been great. And for those of you who don't know, you won a Texas waffle iron today? That's right. At the KSAC Christmas Luncheon, yeah. I won yeah. a waffle iron that makes waffles in the shape of Texas. Oh, oh and waffle mix. I was. Oh. I didn't want to, you know. Really? Yeah. You got waffle mix too? That's wow. right. Oh, my Lord. I think Lord. I have to provide my own eggs, but yeah. I can manage. I think besides, and a little bit of water, yeah. I think, but mm -hmm. that'd yeah. be great. Well, congratulations. Thank to you. you. Uh, besides that, we have a, a lot of fun KSAT stories to share with you online. Andrew's having a lot of fun today. Um, oh, but Andrew's always having fun. While Christmas is usually a fun time, uh, there are some things that sometimes are a little heartbreaking here. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you saw this letter uh, posted by the Tarrant County Safe Haven. Uh, a seven-year-old child penned this really heartbreaking letter that's uh, gone viral and really made the rounds This was a Texas. letter to Santa. That's right. And it has been everywhere. I've yeah. seen it on national news outlets. I mean, it's been, and for good reason. Really tugs at the heartstrings here. Now, Safe Haven, of course, is a shelter for, uh, you know, uh, uh, people uh, who are victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And um, seven-year-old Blake wrote a letter to Santa asking, you know, not just for uh, some toys and things like that, but also a new dad as well. So very Man. Gosh, and he explains why he and his mom are there yeah. in the letter. He tells Santa. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one to read for it's sure. It's something else, but the safe haven said, you know, the good news here is that they've had enough donations where they're actually going to be able to give him uh, almost everything he asked for on that list. And yeah. so donations made that possible. So hopefully he still has a good Christmas and, and turns it around by the new year. You know that people were going to reach out. I think he oh, asked absolutely. for a compass or oh, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, people really were like make simple his, type his things. Christmas. Oh, it's so great to see that, though, to see the community come together around yeah, this time. You love awesome. to see it.
And, you know, Myra, as we wrap down the end of the year, uh, we've been talking here at KSAT.com about the most viral videos we've had ah, in 2019. We've had some good ones. Yeah, we really have. Uh, we listed, um, I think we have about seven in the store. You can uh, go in there, watch each of them. Uh, just some of the ones I'm going to mention, uh, of course, the zebra that escaped, the two zebras that the two uh, zebras had in the New jailbreak Braunfels. in New Braunfels. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. We had uh, another big one was the concrete truck mixer that people yeah. saw in San Antonio earlier this year just spilling concrete everywhere. Pouring wet concrete onto other cars. It was a tough, uh, very unlucky for those cars around yeah. it, of course. A lot of other good ones in here, so you just got to go to ksat.com and check right. them it's out. It's always fun to take a look back. I, it really is. Uh, our last story of the day, Myra, um, Float Fest is back in 2020. Uh, ah, a huge okay. deal for a lot of uh, the younger crowds. A lot of college students loved Float Fest. Um, now, it used to be held uh, in San Marcos uh, on the rivers over there. Okay. And uh, it was a really popular event that had uh, acts like Tame Impala. Uh, I think Run the Jewels was out there. A lot of great young acts, but it was canceled last year out of a lot of, uh, after a lot of controversy. They were able to schedule, they had canceled last year and instead looked forward to this year ahead in 2020. Uh, and they wanted to gear up for, uh, they moved their venue to a personal ranch, a private ranch in Gonzales, oh. which they said is actually an even bigger property. It looks like it will be held um, in, the, in the summer, uh, July 25th and 6th. So okay. uh, it's so going to be a good one. Bigger property, which probably means a bigger party. That's right. And I'm going to take your word for it that this is something that uh, it's, you know, it's, draws a young crowd. It's something that the youths do, Myra. Yeah, I didn't know any of those acts you mentioned. Oh, I, it's it's a, it's okay. It's okay. We'll <laughs> talk about them later. Uh, that's pretty much it going on at KSAT.com. All right. Thanks, Ferris. We'll be right back. <laughs> That does it for this edition of KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. I'm Myra Arthur, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.